All right, let's discuss tables. So very straightforward, at the end of this presentation, you'll be able to construct an HTML table. So HTML tables, they've been around a long time, basically since the start of HTML, and they're the traditional way to get some kind of structured layout in a web page. To do this, several different HTML elements work together. These are the tags we're going to look at, the elements we're going to look at. Uh, let's start looking at them one by one. Also, we're going to work together with style properties. From the last video, we know that style is the way that we handle uh, different visual elements, and it's the same thing with tables. We need to handle these style properties. So, we want to do a table. Obviously, a table goes in the div area, where everything that you see goes. And your basic table structure looks like this. You've got a table slash table. And then inside the table, you've got a header area and you've got a body area, okay? But just to make sure it's not confused with the main header and body area, we have T head and we have T body, okay? T head, T body. Inside the header part, we have a series of cells which are inside a row, okay? So TR is table row. And then over here, finish the table row. And then inside our table row, this is the header column, the very first column, which explains the meaning of all the different columns. So we have a single row, and then we set up the different cells inside that row. First cell, second cell, third cell, okay? These are the column. We'll see an example in a minute. That is the header, and then we have the body, and this is where the actual main content is. So we could have many, many rows, one row at a time, and each row is usually created using lots of boxes, the same number of boxes in each row, usually. Okay? Now when I say box, that's what TD means, right? This one single box in the table. TD, table data. Okay? So one box there, another box, another box. This has three boxes in each row, okay? Same thing with the header, explaining the meaning of each column. They're gonna have three boxes as well, except it's not TD here, it's TH. All right, now, if you kind of put it all together, you're gonna get an example, something like this. And so there's our header row. Skills, difficulty, my level. So that's three columns being constructed. And then into the main part of the table, the body part, we have three rows in this example. And just like the header, we have three boxes. And that's going to give us three columns, basically. Okay, so like we said, TR for each single row, TD for each box, except in the header where we use TH, TH, TH. What's the visual result of this example? This, right? There we are, nice table. Column one, column two, column three, it's done exactly what we asked it to do. Now, perhaps you're thinking, yeah, okay, I can see three columns, but there's some kind of, well, it's all crowded together, right? I need a bit of spacing. Maybe I need some lines to show where all the boxes are, that kind of thing. So that's why we need to move to style so we can handle those things. So what kind of parameters? Well, lots of parameters we could use for style. This is just some, there's many others as well. We saw color before, uh, we saw background before, and here's lots more that we could use and some of those we'll use now. So style applied to our table. Uh, there's a simple table with just two columns right there in this example. We want to have it a bit better visually, so we know what to do. We add a style section. Of course, you could add an external style sheet file, but here we're putting the style at the top of the file. And then we're saying, okay, every table, every table data, little box, and every table header box as well, they will all be shown using these style rules. Padding, which is a little bit of spacing, because remember the last example was very crowded. And also we'd like to see a line around all those boxes. So that's called a border and that's how thick the line is and it's a solid line instead of a dotted line and it's going to be a black line. Those three are applied to the border property, 
Okay, so that's the first set of rules. And then the second one, just for fun, um, every single table box in the main part is going to have purple color text. You can change it to whatever you like. So here's the result. Quite nice now. I've got lots of padding, so it's not all crowded together. I've got purple text in the main part, if that's what you want, it's just an example. And I've also got lines everywhere, so I can very clearly see what's happening. Okay, that's much nicer, much, much nicer use of a table by adding those style properties. All right, um, what else could we do? Well, before we talked about classes, and so for any kind of HTML, including tables, we could use class rules. Remember, class rules are uh, when you put a dot in front of an English word. Dot, English word, dot, English word, and then you have your properties, and that basically sets up a nice English word, which you can use, and here, I'm using it over here, if you want to. So, TD, class equals profit, that's this example here. So I'm saying, okay, for this particular box here with the number 200, I'm going to use this particular set of parameters, light blue background, and the text is going to be on the left side. Okay, what else we've got? Another one here, this box here, the class is zero. All right, there's zero. It's going to use these parameters, and part of this example is to illustrate text align. Okay, aligning text to the left, aligning text to the center, aligning text to the right. That's part of this example. So I've done that here, and the visual result is this one. Just to illustrate text aligning, left, center, right, and also we changed the background color as well. Many, many different things you can do with styles. Okay, I've changed the color of the line, it's green now, and so on. All right, so we've done all those things, and sometimes text aligning is uh, quite important, depending what you're doing. So here we have a more comprehensive example. So I've set up uh, six classes here. For three of them here are for the vertical alignment. Okay, so that's this axis here. So I've said, okay, here, put things at the top vertically. Here, put things in the middle vertically. Here, put things at the bottom. And then I've done another three over here, and I've said, okay, in the x-axis, put this on the left, put it on the center, and put it on the right, right? So I've got six classes there, together with some other stuff as well. And why am I doing that? To illustrate using multiple classes. So the top left cell, the top left box, is going to use the T class and the L class. What's the T class? Vertical alignment top. That means all the text goes right up to the top. Okay, that's the first one. This one, L, what is L? Okay, in the x-axis, the text is going to go on the left-hand side. That's just the very first box right there. Top left. It is going to put the text, whatever the text is, okay, the text is the number one, nothing very exciting. It's going to put it on the top left. So I'm combining two classes together, okay? So I do that with all of these boxes. We have nine boxes, top left, top center, top right, middle left, middle center, and so on, just to illustrate multiple classes, and also to illustrate the different, different types of alignment, X and Y, for text. So when we put it all together, we get this example here, just to illustrate those different positions for the text inside TD, inside the boxes of the tables. All right, now, uh, if you, you know, find this troublesome, remember, you can always jump off to an HTML editor, and they will happily create the HTML for you. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to pop over here and just use this particular editor. And let me just use it properly. Insert table. Okay, how many? Well, let's do something like this. Click, and then it has created the structure for me. It doesn't look very good, but that is the structure that I just outlined. A uh, particular number of columns, a particular number of rows, and, okay, where's all the lines? Well, we just saw, by default, that it doesn't show any lines. That's a separate question. But that is the structure right there, and you can start typing stuff in, filling stuff, and then look at the source code to grab the source code and put it in your own system. All right, so let me do that. Uh, I'll just type a bit, and then I'll look at the source code. So type of things like over here, like, um, you know, hello, something like that. And then let's check at the source code that I've just done. 
and we get this. All right, so it doesn't look too helpful, but actually it is helpful. Okay, it's put some non-breaking spaces in all those boxes, which I didn't ask it to do, but uh, anyway, it just helps make it a little bit thicker in the display. But we do have the things that we're looking at. T table data, table body, table row. We have all of those things there. Maybe a bit hard for you to see. I'm gonna just sort of, you know, try to make it a bit larger. And you can see here, those are the things that we've seen uh, already in the last few slides. Okay, so if it's kind of too much trouble to make it yourself, no problem, just use an HTML editor. Okay, and that's the end of our discussion about HTML tables.